Welcome back to the Welcome Mat Podcast. You already know. It's, am I looking in the right camera? This is a new studio. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm, so, I'm looking. He's here. lost. I, I'm good. I'm good, Vito. Discombobulated. Oh, That's God. the right one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to the Welcome Mat Podcast. It's your boy. You already know. Corey got Joe, aka the voice, aka make your bitch boys. We got Vito on the ones and twos. We back in the place. What's Aggressive up? eye contact. On, on that, on that, <laughs> oh, it, into, the <laughs> into the camera on the intro, really aggressive eye contact. You, look, I really just want to look at you when I'm talking. That was weird. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is this is dope, man. Shout out, we are back. Man. Welcome, at We are not in the um, Eddie's uh, basement anymore. Yeah, Shout we're out. not. We're not next to the janitor's closet. Shout no, out, man. no longer. Shout we're, out. we're in a new. Those, those were good janitors. Why they could afford janitors? This place, this place <laughs> went under. Uh, David lives there. This place went under. <laughs> welcome. Uh, no, they did me dirty. We won't get into that this episode. But, hey, welcome back. How you doing? You doing good? Been good. Been good. Chilling. You happy to be doing back. Class. You have a nice chair to come back. I don't. I don't this is a crazy nice chair. chair. Yeah, you're right. You're you, right. Got, you got comfortability. I'm sitting over here just like... Uh, you look I'm comfortable, too. I feel like Mr. Brown from Medea movies in this spot over here in the corner, dog. <laughs> I am uh, like a biscuit ready to pop over here. <laughs> like I, if I was pregnant, we'd have abortions over here. Lock them up! So I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I'm glad, man. Shout out to Dennis. There's probably some people already in the comments that know where we are, man. At this point, you've been listening this long. You might as well like, subscribe, comment, share with a friend, man. We are back. Welcome back to Shenanigans. I've taken my shoes off, so... Uh, like, well, guess we noticed. Know. Everyone in the room, we noticed yeah, that, that the friend. shoes are off. <laughs> If your homie, like, have you ever had a homie that's like, all right, look, let's go simpler, like, that his breath stank? Not a homie that stank, because that ain't my homie if he stank. But if you got, like, a person whose breath, have you ever, have you ever confronted a breath stanker? No. 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 Too couldn't, cowardly? Couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't walk up to someone and be, and open up my heart <laughs> and, you know, bring down my deepest, darkest fears. I can't do that in front of someone who's actually in my friend group. I, are they in your friend group if they like constantly have stinky breath? You know what I mean? Are they in my friend not group me. if they constantly have stinky breath? Like I'm, I, I'm just thinking like I want my friends to have good hygiene, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so why are you coming around me? Crest is a dollar thirty nine on body some now. You know what I mean? Like, I have Every corner say, store. <laughs> Whatever you like. What happened to the Listerine strips? Those bitches were powerful. <laughs> Those are crazy. You, you, have you, 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 uh, did y'all have Listerine strips in Germany? No, we did. You did. Uh, 100%. Well, I, don't, I don't know, man. Germany just... Anywhere that's not... And being from Gary Sanders is crazy, but anywhere that's not America, I'd be like, let's make it from a third world place. Like, why are you... <laughs> were you okay there? Uh, also, if you're in this country and you're in Mississippi and Alabama, I also think you're in a third world place. Yeah. Meanwhile, America thirty thirty five percent of America is not for world is not third world country based I mean, or esque. I don't even know what that means. Like the number, <laughs> I'm from a third world city myself. Most of it's third world country but, uh, America. This is like a Trump presentation. This is like shithole countries just elaborating. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. We haven't been here in a while. We have yeah, to fucking man. get into the get in the groove of it and, and everything. To, yeah. Remember when we had the ferns? Oh, <laughs> remember when it was just when we was Zach Gallup and Atkins. Yeah, that yeah, two burned, two couches and a, and a mm-hmm. little bit of shrubbery yeah, next to us. Up. Now, now we can just pull up a random video. Uh, <laughs> we can pull up <laughs> Zach Gallup and Atkins if we want to, but he hey. also couldn't fit in this desk here. But <laughs> <laughs> you'd also be struggling, yeah, losing but, weight sitting there. Uh, before I guess before we get into uh, where we've been at, I guess. Um, we gotta promote the shows. We gotta promote the shows, people. You know how it's going. Uh, same as always with this one. Next up, Mike, every Tuesday and Thursdays, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. It's in North Hollywood. You can hit us up on Next Up Mike. Hopefully, right here, Vito, right somewhere. And pull up, hit us up on Instagram. Hit us up, sign up on the slotted. It's a very good room. They say Corey bangs on the walls and the AC does not work. Reminds me of another. And the, uh, <laughs> but shout out next up, Mike, every Tuesday in the Valley, 6 to 8.30, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I've shortened the mic somehow in this promo run. Uh, but we got a few things going on. 
and there'll be drinks. There, there'll be drinks, refreshments. Yeah, Everybody will be able I mean, to sometimes replenish. Water, sometimes there's not. Uh, sometimes. There's I, I guess I, I can promote uh, best of next up is uh, September 29th. It is a showcase at the next up venue where we're highlighting some of the best characters that have come to the next up. This is the way to uh, honor and give quality stage time and the comics that deserve it. So that is at the end of the month if you want to come see that. Myself will be there. Uh, Mayu, who's on episode two, will be there. Vito will be there. Uh, Jay will be there. You see this fucking hat, dog? And then, so September 29th, same venue in the Valley. It'll be a 7 o'clock show, maybe 8 o'clock show. You know what I mean? Probably six, eight really great comics that's been a part of Next Up over the past year. And we plan to put that on at the last Thursday of every month from here on out. Uh, and then, I guess the last show I'll have to promote is this Friday. Shout out uh, to people that's already in the comments that are here for nasty reasons. We already know the roast battle and the come up showcase is this week. Uh, format be changing soon, but we'll get to that in a different video. But the come up is at 6.30. Uh, five open mic slots on the slot if anybody wants to sign up. And for the audience member, there will be three uh, baby pit bulls headlining, man, just to make your night entertaining. And then your main event for the night on Friday will be the roast battle, the third roast battles. Uh, continuing to learn and uh, put them on. I was just telling Vito, uh, because I'm roasting Luke Walls tomorrow at the Hollywood Improv. And um, I literally had to say to myself as I was writing jokes yesterday for, well, this morning for it, send it out to you guys uh, for some uh, little feedback. And I was like, yeah, oh, I have never done a roast. <laughs> I've never, <laughs> I, I, I've never done a roast. Like, I only know. Or a roast that wasn't during recess. Yes, yeah, I was about to say, I only know one. A roast time. with good lighting. Roast, I don't really do that I that know much. A roast in the back of the bus because you wasn't supposed to be back there mm-hmm. and the ride's crazy, no seatbelts, and the nigga's like, yo, <laughs> big ass. Like, I was just telling somebody, like, like, uh, so it was this thing online, David. Uh, I know you've seen some of the people at home have seen it. Some of my people that, I, that know I, <laughs> me from back home have not seen it at all. They have never seen these YouTubers. They are confused. I, my homegirl from back home finally being like some trolls, she sent me uh, some of the trolls. Do you know what I mean? She's like, "Hey, what they on with you, bro?" <laughs> I'm like, no, you, you, you don't worry about that. This is uh, those people don't exist. Those are the, the, fake. Uh, <laughs> you will never run into them at Walmart. Like, ooh, ooh, we should start calling them Whole Foods NPCs never. NPCs like they are. <laughs> NPCs. <laughs> you NPCs that deal with me. But Auntie, uh, stop talking to those non-playable characters, yes. ma'am. Mama. Don't ignore... You have errands to run. I, I, ignore... Uh, what's, what, 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 I don't want to say his actual Twitter name. Bitch hooded assassin. Ignore him. It, it's certain because... That's been you got a list of names just memorized? Days, dog. <laughs> days. I just said, like, if, you, if you're a troll... Uh, my bad. If you're an NPC and you <laughs> in my DM for days with no response, it's because you can't recite the lyrics to knock if you buck. Like, if you can't get me open and verse, and when Princess come out, okay, we know get hip hop. I don't want to hear from you. And if you can't answer the Jeopardy question, who did Kenny Lamar tell anything about the movie? And you got to name the movie. You niggas not black enough to speak with me, all right? <laughs> and speaking of black stuff, roast him. I, so it was this thing online about, I guess, bodily, it was saying bodily harm jokes or body shaming. Um, appearance jokes aren't roasting. And I said, that is the essence of roasting. Mm-hmm. Can, we, can we can we get on the screen? I want Google, no YouTube. Can we get a, a Google search of uh, shooting the dozens? And then I think we could put joning too. I'm not sure what the original phrase roasting is. But this is a slave term. I'm so glad we have facts today. It, it's just my facts though. <laughs> Dozens. Shooting the dozens. Yes. Yeah, we can we get the Urban Dictionary. You can pull it up on the screen for people at home. But uh, as David's searching that up, and I'll continue to go. Can you put that camera on yourself and read that definition of shooting the dozens? Because I may be black. This is crazy. And is it the original term, or do they have Joni on there as well? Uh, n- no, this is well, we just shoot the shooting the dozens. It should be this. Go ahead. Uh, the, to to engage in an informal contest and and trades insults with someone uh, about each other. Wait, let me get it on the screen. Trading insults about each other. Oh my goodness. With each other, family members, especially their mothers, typically in front of a group. And typically. 
the insoles are not meant to be taken seriously. So this is okay. <laughs> Exclusive to African American communities. Okay, who wrote this? Exclusive. <laughs> who said it? Wait, <laughs> just the end. Is that on the screen? Does it it's say? It's right it? on there. Yeah. I want. Can Can you go back into Google and search "shooting the dozens" origin? Uh, I read a book in college. Shout out. I I, I wasn't really good at these uh, English classes. English. They gonna fuck me up in the comments. English two thirty nine. And I, I um I don't know if it was uh. Is it the book Only Through God's Eyes? Or or it's the movie that has Halle Berry, but we read the book. And in the in the book, they're talking about shooting a dozen. And my teacher tries to school us. Yeah, you can go to the wiki version. No, it's just dozens. Yeah, it's, okay. oh, it's not the roasting? Oh, what the hell is dozens? Uh, <laughs> just telling you about what dozens is. Origins is, is, play, is oral history rooted in survival. Go to that one for the Baltimore Sun. Hell yeah, Baltimore Sun is it's only black journalists there. <laughs> you think after seeing the wire, you think there's any white journalists still there? I uh, I know better. Damn, I hope they don't make us pay for a subscription. The news making me pay. No, it's enough ads. Now. It's enough ads for them to be living off it for the oh, next yeah. couple yeah. months. Yeah, the, the, the Ravens have rented out the entire page here. Um, <laughs> I guess the point I'm getting at is they continue to go. Is um, yeah, this is a, a a thing. I guess I'm just defending my point uh, on that. Uh, but to get to the point where WNPCs was right, I myself, I, I could have been more prepared all, all, all times. As prepared as I am for the roast tomorrow with Luke. And shout out to Comic Wars because I know they'll make a good clip of it. And uh, when that gets posted, a lot of you guys will be eating your dicks. Um, so, but I, I don't know. I, I just wasn't raised with, I, I don't know. I, I keep saying this Jeff Ross, Tony Hinchcliffe style of roasting, but. I don't, I don't know where people are getting these uh, notions from that you don't talk about people's appearances, that you don't... I don't, I don't oh, so this thing is just internet people. This is yeah. A, they would Ooh, never... never they never found movie. themselves in a comedy show. Yeah, yeah. I, they, it, yeah yesterday I went there and respond to somebody and say, like, I'm really realizing I've never been to comedy shows. I responded to somebody and said, uh, they were like, well, it'd be strange. And I'm like, no, this is just a regular show. Like, comedians can't just be burning through material like that. Yeah, leave your house. Come, come, experience come outside, come experience it. People are working on specials. People are still working bits out. Yeah. People, like, it, it, like God, this is such a... It's, that's why I'm like, do y'all know how comedy works? Mm -hmm. Like, because somebody... And because that wasn't the response that got me. It was uh, just a real troll fucking NPC just going, they say, in quotation marks, comedians don't want to be burning material. You got... You niggas just type. <laughs> you niggas like... I, I remember when typing class was required in school. Did you have typing class in school? Or is your generation, y'all just, y'all just was supposed to already know? Type in class? Typing. Typing, typing class. Okay, hey, don't, okay, don't, yeah. hold on. This is the black pod. That's why we questioned you on episode one like that. Typing, nigga. Typing? Typing, nigga. No G. You know how hard it is to spell all your words on Apple without the G, nigga? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard because they just auto-correct you bad. But it's without the G. I'm just of course, typing. but... But I did, I didn't know that typing class was so important in America. I t I, d I had one typing class, one time, yeah, and it never it, came up again. It was I think it was bigger in my mom's generation, uh, because it was like that '80s style Microsoft popping off and stuff like that. Uh, but when I was in middle school, it was a required class that you had to take a typing class, and it was like, what the fuck, dog? I I don't know. I I just wasn't experienced for it. Um, I I was a typer like this for so long. And then <laughs> Typewriter. Got the, yeah, like, but once we got the fucking computer at the crib, you just became better. You know, MySpace every night, you be on Facebook, mm -hmm. you start going through the websites. But these motherfuckers are just skilled. It was this Jay Z bar uh, from a while back on his Breakfast Club interview where he's talking about uh, internet trolls or NPCs, and he's just like, these motherfuckers is good, dog. <laughs> they sit around all day and come up with their own conspiracy. And then they got a video with it, a picture with it, dog. They done searched up some shit on the net, dog. They done did this. You niggas need to work for NASA. You niggas <laughs> on your bother me all day. You Hours of research. Skills, nigga. <laughs> it's a nigga that keep uh, photoshopping our face on weird bodies. And I want to be him and be like, you, you, you're doing too much good work to sit there, beat your dick, wake up, type in death noodles, and be like, I'm going to get these niggas today. Like, these are, go get a good job. Like, you know the problem is, I'm getting my bag now. Ford Motors clothes. 
The steel bitch was close. You, real men, we used to fight wars, nigga. Like, what is, I'm not sure, but like I said, it is the internet. Uh, I was trying to tell them, uh, Stephen and Dennis, like, uh, I think what really got me uh, to chill out, I was with Baby Girl, and uh, we had just had the great morning. You know when you play fighting in the bed in the morning? Like, it is a great, you know what I mean? One of those mornings, ready to go out, get a blunt, get some food. As we're rolling, they trolling it up. They, they hit me hard. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. I won't say which one, because then they'll think they got me. I'm just saying, you motherfucker. I'm at the crib ready to shoot niggas with my AK tattoo. I am upset, dog. And as it continues to go, she's trying to tell me, hey, man, calm down. You're getting a little riled up here. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I got this. And then somebody, <laughs> some nigga, uh, after all this is going on, some nigga randomly jumps in. And I don't know, it, oh. Fucker that screenshotted the crowd and like counted up all the people. He had his daughter in the in his profile picture, and immediately I went, "You've never got pussy. That is your niece." Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like this this is, couldn't be true. Like you are an incel. You've never got pussy. So I, I respectfully said, "Hey, sir, you have a kid in that profile picture. You better tread lightly. All right, I will fuck that." Respectfully, baby up with these respectfully. Jokes. Yeah, respectfully. All babies can get... I've seen... Have you ever seen an ugly baby for real? I knew a baby was ugly when my mom's friend had a baby and brought the picture over to the house, and she put it down when she's not there at the house. Like, it's down on the ground. It's like... It's, like, for it's, it's face down on, on, the the counter, on the counter. It's just like, we don't see it, but if, if Shorty come over, lift it right on up. I'm going to say her name there. If Shorty come over, lift it right on up. We, oh, we love look. Look, we going to call it look. Lil Sarah, we love Lil Sarah. That ain't a black man. We love Lil Shaniqua. That's a just two nigga name. We love Diamond and uh, whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. Baby, yeah, the baby had to get it. So I, you know, I hit him with the Michael Jordan meme. Fuck mm-hmm. the kids, man. Mm-hmm. Classically. And uh, this is how you know, like Jay said, somebody just randomly came in and was like, you attacking kids now? I felt better of you. I will piss on your mother's grave. I don't know <laughs> if you know how this works. Like, what are you, on the net? Shut up, whore. Like, what, what? Uh. So that's where we've been. Um, roasting. That's where we've been. Coming from a, a, a what, what was it? What, what do we call it? A jan- janitor's closet yep. next to a fern into uh, this real studio. That's what we've been doing. Yelling at mothers and children, nieces on the internet. I don't think I've been yelling at I'm not all capsing them. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah, doing yeah. that. I am typing aggressively. I am. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, nothing else. But the, uh, uh, I guess, where have we really been? Uh, I don't know. I think when we were in March, I would say Black Party kind of took off at that point. Uh, the last time we were going, to, we were like in the midst of yeah. Black Party. Always really distracted by, <laughs> um, by other things. David was trying to go through school. Trying. Um, everybody, I felt like in the group, Um, and I'll say most importantly, I don't have a computer, and uh, David doesn't live near me, and uh, I tried to take the stress out of uh, him, and I was trying to upload the four episodes myself. Certain motherfuckers would play around with their MacBook, wouldn't give them to me. So a lot of that, uh, especially the staggering, because we could have let it, we got all the lost episodes off and stopped, but uh, that was on me, and so, you know, hopefully, uh, shout out to Dennis, help with Dennis, and like I said, he save it all right for the clips but we can go on up yes yeah, all we up. need is to throw our watermark right here is it gonna be in this corner or that corner Leo? watermark yep you know what i mean maybe a little graphic at the beginning for the what's it called the show come off but yeah yeah we we back man and uh now we got we got twitter trolls so that's fire man npcs i love free guy uh i'm ryan reynolds you niggas are npcs like remember that at all times uh it's it's a nigga <laughs> it was a nigga and uh, we ended up that way Start talking, but it's a nigga did seven days of content on this nonsense, and I went, "You ain't had nothing else lined up. You ain't have a reaction vid. I never you did. ain't have a mukbang. <laughs> you, you got a kid and three children, bitch. Like, go support your family. Like, I'm not understanding this shit. Uh, but yeah, that's it, man. How how are you feeling? Because no Twitter trolls have hit you, but 
but you might get hit now after this first pod comes out with this clickbait ass title. Uh, that's a good advertisement for this job. Hey, you. Nigga just harassing you. You, uh, yeah. This fake ass German will speak German for them so they don't think you're a fake German. David's German for all of the new uh, deaf noodle listeners that are coming over from that community. I can just scream butterfly over and over again and it'll sound terrible. Well, that's this, what the German language is. This is not going to come out until. Uh, well, shout out to Ben giving me a good tag at the end of that Queen Elizabeth joke for. Uh, Luke, he said I should just hail Hitler at the end, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I just set it up after that because you know the bit I don't want to say. Are you that. running this idea by me? I'm running is that, this is that idea you Because <laughs> what the pod's not going to know, they, the, the shit's going to be out. I battle them tomorrow. It ain't yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It ain't <laughs> like they're going to get into it. We're trying to drop this Monday or something. Okay, we, we'll okay. Be, yeah, I'm saying, should I hail? Because it's too... I don't want you to have bad form. That's what that's what bad it is. Form. Don't, don't have bad form. The reason I'm asking is because I want to say whatever term they were saying when they... I do I want to... You know what I mean? I want to uh-huh. get one of those off too. Yeah. Because I want to like drop the mic like in my, in my salute. <laughs> you want historical accuracy yeah. in your comedy. I okay. Do. You know what I mean? You saw that Queen Elizabeth judge. Like, who else is comparing monarchs and Kobe? Like, you know, I'm, I'm generational. <laughs> ben said his favorite joke was the men in black joke. Uh, that I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, that's just oddly observational. That's just yeah. a Corey joke in and out. Yeah, that's a, I said that. I was like, I need a good... Can rarely joke. copy that. Bro, it's, it's that wild. was what Ben was going back and forth me on the text. Me and uh, Dave was talking earlier, and I was like, Ben sent me something weird. And, I, and I, it was just basically like, uh, some of this looks a little messy. I want to read it verbatim. It was like, some of this looks a little messy. And I, I just kind of came... It was an outline. Right. Yeah, it was, it was definitely outlined. I was just trying to write it out more for myself. Uh, it's definitely, I, I definitely going to sound different person. when it comes out of your mouth on the stage. Definitely going to sound way more polished. Okay, he goes, these are great. Some seem a little messy and can be condensed. He said, like you ever see someone and diagnose them with scoliosis, and I'm so glad iPhones work. And this was my response. That's the, that's how I'm gonna say it. And he's he's so confused. No, you, you, reading it, you can really hear your voice piercing yeah. through the joke. Because I'm like, are you, did you expect me to write this in MLA format, nigga? No, I'm writing no, no, this no. in nigga terms, so I know when I see yeah, it, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna add more Corey sauce format. on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I, I do like the hell Hitler in the. And then he gave me something really good because I'm doing this joke. Uh, I guess we can read a couple of them now. And people at home, uh, y'all can tell me if y'all like these. See, look, if y'all would have just. Stay patient. Now you're getting to see. I, we don't even do stuff like this. Do you let people in? It's a roast, so I don't mind because the jokes is going to be out online on the internet right after. Got the Common Cores and KB and that whole crew for filming, but I don't mind this. But look, you get the inside of a process. Another comic trying to punch him up. So the joke that he punched up will be, uh, speaking of Luke not getting pussy, he liked to say he's celibate, like it was a choice or some shit. Acting like he's not dying to get that nut off. I promise y'all, if I offer Luke my boy pussy in the back after this, he wouldn't hesitate to take it. I thought you'd never ask. It's my destiny to keep fucking over black men, just like my fathers before him. Before me. Oh, that was the punch-up. Forefathers. Oh, it was forefathers. It's forefathers. Wait, wait. Ben's uh, punch-up is, uh... But I know if I... Uh, uh, but I know if I offered my boy pussy, he couldn't, he couldn't resist fucking another black man over like his fathers before him. Now that is concise. I do. That was a good note. I am gonna use it like that. Okay. That was a good note. Okay. Yeah. So certain stuff like that, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I am just writing it in nigga form, and I couldn't mm-hmm. stumble over it. You ever? Because I'm not reading off my phone and shit like that, unless I see somebody. In the, I don't know. I never do that. Reading off your phone takes. It's a natural the, thing. It's a nervousness thing mm-hmm. for me. You know. How Every I now and again, you just phone. forget. I I just completely have a blank stare. Into the crowd or into the light, and I have no idea so what, what, are you doing what my next voice is, my next word is. Okay. So what are you doing to counter these trepidations? Like, I leave my phone in the audience. Now. I just leave the phone in the audience, have it record from there, and then then just go up. I just have a notebook, notebook with some with some points on there. You still go with the notebook. Well, my book. That's why I think that's the roasting jokes were written out different. Cause my notes, I just have notes of bullet points of key words that get me. Mm-hmm. To where I need to go, like uh, that's good. Yeah. I, it, it, I was just talking to Niles about this. Like I, I don't know. I think it's just that repetition of doing certain jokes and just knowing. 
Because you can forget a point. Like, I've seen you do this because uh, it's still so early in comedy. I don't think when you forget a point, it should just trip you up the whole thing. Like, oh, forgot to say that one thing. Like, uh, comedy's different. It's like a, a furniture, a piece of furniture you put together and you got screws left on it. But it worked. The laughs came out and you still got it. It's when you freak out and all the legs aren't on the chair and you're going, I don't know whether, I just think that never helps anything. It just fell apart when you brought up that Germany bit and started uh, talking about the Nazis. That's when you started bombing, David. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I think uh, Germany stuff recently has been really good. Uh, Ted ain't been up. Uh, he didn't get up a lot in August, but I don't know. I thought the Germany stuff you were recently doing, uh, the national anthem stuff, was really good. It brought it around because I, I always say, like, when you're so early in comedy, it's so many cliches that I like to see that mm-hmm. I see. Was it yours name bits. I was. I just caught myself starting to write another name, name bit. Joke? Name oh joke. Oh my god. Yeah, that's well, just name jokes and where you from jokes are like the the start of comedy, or it's like riffing on the uh-huh. <laughs> some some NPC got me good with this. <laughs> I had a different uh, uh, profile, not different pen uh, clip of my stand up up, and it was the chateau clip of me saying, oh, you, "Who ordered that?" And a troll went, "You out here doing?" What did he eat in a day? You fucking hack. And I went, damn, you're right. Uh, <laughs> and it, and I, I thought that bit was different, but it is a what are you eating a day? It's a, it's a basic crowd work joke. Uh, but I, I just think it's certain things that you do to wet your beak, uh, per se, just to like, oh, okay, if I could write my own version of it, it's like, it, it's almost like um, you have a template, this is how you write jokes, and you try it's to experience. get it yourself. Mostly that, experience. That known to Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you know, I'm like, I love just lean on your experiences, lean on your stories. Like yeah. nobody has that because it's the thing of like we're gonna be in the, the open mics and the shows this week, and it's gonna be a lot of talk of Queen Elizabeth, and it's gonna be like, all right, and it's gonna be one out of every ten comics that has an original take. You know what I mean? Like a lot of them gonna be regurgitated. I was gonna say before that though, Yorsi gave me one that was like uh, about the young comics that's like um, you know, seeing people spending fifty. Well, I got so hot driving the other day, man. I was just sitting at the motherfucking stop sign. And what's the punchline of that? And I noticed I wasn't even driving. No, no, no. I, I was, <laughs> I was in a drive-thru. No, it's the, uh, it's the. I'm sitting over here waiting on the stop sign to turn green. <laughs> I thought it was a traffic light. <laughs> Yorsi your, funny though. It's you, such a cliche. Yorsi has that voice. He has the, he has that experience which you get the voice out of. Because when you get your voice, that's the template that you go after, yeah. for either your whole that's, career in comedy. Yeah. As soon as you got that voice, you're just going back to that template over and over. Yeah, because you find Ben was saying something to me today when we talking about the roast. He was like, I feel like roasts have their own beat, and I was like, Oh, this is such a young comic statement. Nothing has their own beat. I try to tell you, especially the conversation we just had with Gary a couple months ago. You create the beat. You are the rhythm. Yep, yep. So if you're going to go out there on stage and, it, you know, like we said, me, colloquially, it's like I was trying to tell them the same thing a set swap. There was a lot of similar pacing. Everybody got the same flow at that set swap. The moment me and Luke step up there, it's a whole different, because I'm going to open my voice, my mouth first. Niggas going to come out in the first seven words, and everybody's going, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm always pacing myself like, how I'm talking to you now, or... You know what I mean? It was like when we were talking to Ben Gordon outside of the Big Chillin' Show, and we was talking, and he laughed at something and goes, yeah, that's one of your bits. And I had to go, oh, wait, this nigga don't know. Oh, no, I'm the same nigga on and off stage. That's your voice. And that's what I've been telling y'all recently as young comics. Like, you know how crazy it is. You get into comedy for, for a reason. Some girl, one of your closest friends, kept telling you, man, you a funny motherfucker, man. This nigga fool, he a fool. He's silly as hell. And you get on stage and you lose all of that. The reason people think you're likable, your palatability. You go up there and you try to do comedy. That's why I think Steve Martin was so great. There are no rules. When you keep watching back wild, crazy things, you start realizing, oh, this is just like a anti, you know, and people can't do that. Eli does it really well. Uh, I think people try to say, uh, I've heard somebody try to call Eli Andy Kaufman, but that, that is full on Steve Martin these stuff that's going on. I've never seen something so anti-stand-up be so beautiful and concise. Like, he, they are 
and this is high praise for you I in the first episode of that, but they are cohesive in the what you think is a scatterbrain thought. Um, damn, I hate to give uh, Eli's bit away, but he has a bit just I guess to keep it short. Sorry, Eli, about um, <laughs> he says pedophilia is is just as bad as child porn. He goes on to read a Yelp review and says. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'm a jump thief. He keeps going. He reads it again. He reads it again. He's like, see, guys, I told you. Joe Silver is just as bad as pedophilia. Just like Jerry Seinfeld marrying that girl when she was super young. And it's just like, he's been going five minutes. A couple people might have thought, oh, he stumbled off the path. He came back. Where did this even start from? Where's the... I'm always getting to my point. And that's what I'm saying about you building furniture. Like, I got to put this furniture together the best way I have on the... It's like DIY building furniture comedy. Like, I'm up there by myself. Like, when you're in that house by yourself, you got to put the couch together, put the TV stand together. It's going to be some pieces sitting over there. You're like, I don't know, man. It's holding it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's comedy. Like, oh, if that got him. That's why I'm always not a fan of looking through your notes. And I always say, and it's some disagreements. And we can't, we'll have a lot of comments on here and talk process and stuff. But I'm just... I failed almost every open book test. <laughs> I don't know where to look. What am I looking for? Because I didn't study prior. I don't have a preference. Like a preface. I, I don't have a thought of like, oh, if this goes wrong, I'm going to go here. If this goes wrong, I'm going to go here. Like, oh, I know if this question is on the test, I'm going to look here. Like, if you ain't did that before you got up on stage, how does looking through your book, turning the page, finding exactly where it was you messed up on that? Mm. Does that make sense? That's all I'd be saying. I'm like, well, no, I, I don't know. You, you, you got to do the work prior. And I'm, that's why at this stage it's so important for y'all. I'm like, get up, get up, get up, get up, and get up. Because I, I could talk your ear off, and you still go with a different style. Comedy's beautiful. It's like a man problem. The style, the way I solve the problem might not be the way you solve it. Mm-hmm. I can walk you through it on the board just like your teacher did and be like, well, I hope this makes sense to you. But there is so many ways you can get there yourself. And that was, math was crazy. It was like, look, this is the way the book say. But if you got a different way, you can show your work now. <laughs> the answer is correct. It's repeating equations uh, over and over again, or uh, evaluations. What, what are those? Not evaluations. Yeah, my, it's okay. I'm on the I said, Sorry, I'm didn't have much of a point. Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, functions. It's just math, like you were saying. Comedy's everything, man. That's algorithms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, comedy's, so. comedy's everything, but I like the it's solving a problem. Like, you get up there, every audience is a different equation. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, and that's the crazy thing about comedy. Like, I mean, it's the earliest thing you notice of, like, I've been doing this joke for five months straight. It's been killer, and for some reason, the night, it ain't hit one bit. What the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. And it then a joke, a joke you ain't killed with all year. You do it for some reason, randomly again, add bitch into it. And that shit a hit now. <laughs> He's like, what the hell? What the hell is this? Like, comedy is funny, man. It's the... It, and that's why uh, it's so funny to see... Uh, and I guess that is why they are NPCs. Because before... not Before I had NPCs in my mentions, the internet's talk of stand-up comedy was oh, the greatest. I could never. And you couldn't. So why speak on? And you know you can. Mm-hmm. You watch Bill Burr's special and thought that was it. Bill Burr take that shit eight times, same outfit, one time with no audience, one time with the cameras. Like, what are y'all thinking? Like, man, come in, come in, uh, I want to do a pod where it's just like, we gonna call it like the perfect set. Where people talk about what it, like if they've ever had a perfect set, the closest they've gotten to a perfect set. They are, them bitches is rarer than like holographic Pokemon cards, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get one of those where you hit every beat, the moment. Because there's a lot of times, I tell them a lot, man, when I, I've i been killing so consistently last year, it's times when I know, uh, like I keep calling it, it's, I feel like a tour guide, y'all. Like when I hit y'all with that first riff for the first time I open my mouth or the first movement I do catch you, I'm like, ooh, we, we maybe going on a ride for y'all. You know what I mean? <laughs> we going, come on now. I'm going to take y'all <laughs> on this trip with me, man. And it's beautiful. And even in those, a lot of those moments, there's some missteps. I forgot this line. I forgot this. Word. That's why it's like the perfect set. That's why I'm always like, you, you, 
you may never tell that joke the way you want to tell it. I think I was trying to get that observation uh, yesterday when we were talking about my special, like, because uh, he wanted to do the taping with no audience members in there. And we're going to do it. But I'm just like, man, when we get all the footage back, my goal is to do the two shows and have one of them be that perfect set. And I've been talking about, like, how do you find the magic of one of those tour guy sets when they carry on for the ride? Like, how do you create that for this moment for your special? Because comedy ain't that. <laughs> you can have your ritual every time being prepared. And, like, say you get the wrong text before your mood is off, it's over. You sitting there in the fucking, ugh. You sitting there blaming the audience. You're like, no, your timing was off all night, bro. You normally yeah. hit on the two and the four. You was on the one and the three tonight, bro. And for some niggas, I don't know. It, sometimes that's not recoverable. Sometimes that's just like, it, it's the pains of the game, man. Ten years in, and it's just still like, ooh, I'm searching for the fucking perfect set, dog. I ain't expect to be talking perfect sets, man. I want to talk about consistency. I don't know, man. Do you think you've had a perfect set or a close to perfect set? Or never. What's the what's never. the most perfect set you think you've had? And what, like, what, where was it? What, what happened? I've I've had I've had good sets around before. I mean, they've happened, but so a perfect set, set that that that's okay, crazy. Perfect. Don't play semantics. So yeah. Like, what, what's a great set for you? And what would make it perfect? Oh. A great set. Uh, I've, I've I've had I've had good sets. I've had some you know respectable sets. <laughs> I've had some sets that I've listened back to and haven't squinted, you know. But uh, I've have had some shows. Also, obviously, should the shows go way better? You listen back to the shows and it's just like okay, you get a better pop on something that completely was going nowhere in a at a, like a mic or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but to have a perfect one, I feel like I I I, I need a couple more. Years <laughs> to get to get a perfect set in, you know. Do you think you're hard on yourself in comedy? Yeah, yeah. Because who else is gonna be hard on you? Me. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I just talked to Ben about this subject when I was like asking you to perform on a special. I think you're too hard on yourself. Like, uh, we, we talk about quality stage time so much right now is because uh, these days I can go a few days. I remember doing quarantine, it was like, that's the day of the week and the month, like I'm stay. I can go, I can have a show tomorrow at the Improv and not go up again until Friday here at the Sunset Spot, and I'm going to still be him. You talk about finding your voice, like, I, yeah, that's a big part of it, but, yeah, there, there's, I am at the, I'm still at an early stage, technically, of like, I'm learning how to consistently. Oh, that'll get us to consistency, but I'm learning how to. All right, how do I continue to do that? Like I did it once. How do I bring that magic back again? Talk about recreating. My, how do I turn that back around? And I, I'm so ritualistic. I'll go through the same thing I did that day. The same thing I ate. I'm trying to. Now I want to wear the same outfit, dog. Cause mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I'm killing that outfit. Look fresh. You know how she work. You know, untucked look, chain. Look good, feel good, dress good. You you gonna do good. <laughs> And, you know, I love Chappelle and his worker man, uh, his button, his jumpsuit, man. The homie had one on at the Indianapolis show. Shout out to Danny, man. But, hell yeah, I want, I, 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 I'm still learning how to kill consistently. Yeah. It's yeah. the times, like, even last night, uh, when we had the show last night, great show here, the Friday show. Uh, every other Friday will be going on, double headers now. The Friday show, come through, man, lies at the <laughs> Just kidding. Made a one on the hey, spot, man. man. They needed one, nigga. Hey, <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, like, even then, I'm learning, like, all right, make sure I lock in right before I go up. Make sure I, you know, I do, I gotta, I don't have, I, not, uh, yes, I want to plan. It ain't gotta be to a T, but I do want somewhere to go. Like, you can focus however you want, but the way I'm doing it these days are, I got a plan that I want to talk about these. The riff can take me anywhere, though. I love starting with the riff. Oh, learning that, too, that I love starting with a riff. I want to start with something in the moment that just happened. Because, like I always say with the black crowds, a black crowd will make you universally appeal to every crowd. Because a black crowd's demeanor is this. And you better be funny. 
I pay twenty dollars to get in there. Your ass be clear to be fucked. So I want that in the moment because it ain't, it ain't about your script for that crowd. Fuck that script. Oh, you about to come in here? And, uh-uh, I don't give a fuck about the script. Crowd That's how I be feeling time. doing some of the, the still being in the mic scene of like, man, some we don't care about your script. But then you can get jaded like we've talked about before and start entertaining micers. But that black crowd universally prepares you for every crowd because it's fuck your script. Come in here. Be funny. In the moment, talk about somebody in the front row. Bad bitches, the, the niggas in there were like, I want my big jacket for a reason. I'm trying to be like original King of Comedy. Take my shit, wear it around that bitch. Run around the stage in my hoe. You know what I mean? So it's that for me of like, all right, I know now when I come into every room, I want you to know I'm funny. Not that I've prepared, not that I've been working on the jokes. I want you to know, hey, okay, I can hang with that nigga. He's funny as hell. But it's like I said, your palatability, your likability is like that is. The reason you get pussy is the reason you try to do comedy. The reason you have friends is the reason you try to do comedy. The reason your mama puts up with your goofy ass is because that's why you got in comedy. That's what you got to bring on the stage. And a lot of times you're trying to create, a lot of young comics trying to create a comedian personality or some shit like that. Or I'm trying to tell, my homie was like, you got a stage persona back in the day, like 2017. And I know I have a stage persona now. But like I said, it's, Became, it's weird to say, you become this blend. I've become the dude on the stage. That heightened version, you know, like Seinfeld was about Seinfeld, but not about Seinfeld. That's me, but like, it's, it's all life now. Like, this, this is about me, but it's not like we have these five, yeah, we have real conversations, but like, when, when the camera's on, we rolling, we in action, bro. I know what works. I, well, I got an idea of what works. And yeah, I've got the proof of concept, I got a history. It is time, but more is quality stage time. You don't have to be like, oh, I haven't been getting up. It, it takes some people two years to get my perfect set. No, it's going to take you maybe ten quality sets. If you ask me, when did I feel like I went super set? Last September in the comedy chateau. First time. Yeah, five I years went, in. I went. That's so funny. Four or five years in. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you're talking about, and I've had really good sets, great sets, I think. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about euphoria of, I left my body that night. I saw me perform. Mm-hmm. Like, seriously. Like, I remember coming out the cr- my Oh. Out of well, body I'm experience. Slow. I'm slow. I look around. Oh, anything working. Uh, do the, the Dodgers hat. Shorty said she had pizza. Like, I remember that whole night of, like, nothing was getting past me. And it was that thing of, like, shout out. Sorry. The little shorty you brought to the show. She said something. My whole point, too, when I'm up there, my response is, I ain't letting these niggas breathe. You can't breathe when I'm up there. You got ha ha. You can't breathe, nigga. I know some of y'all in there like it wasn't like that at the road. Come see these sets. I'm washing up you niggas, man. Vito knows a lot of niggas in this comedy scene know. That's why it's so it's so hard when you be like, you think I can't do jokes? You be wanting to give him the carrying joke right there. Like, Again, nigga, you think I ain't? Hey, I packed up a lot of y'all favorite comics. I sent the openers home. Hey, we have packed boys up. I'm not going to diss that one comic. I'm digging the dog from Supernova yet. I'm going to get him. I know you like him. Don't ruin our relationship with me. Ah, I'm going to get him. Because why would you do me like that? I'm a child. All right? <laughs> like, like, respect you, like, respect to you. Like, give me some advice, ho. I don't know. That brought me the wrong way. This conversation would be important in that little segment of that when we, when we bring that comic up. What we just have him on the pod? Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She pulls up. Pulls up with the little puppy. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I, yeah, I just I don't like letting niggas yeah. breathe when I'm up there. I like getting every laugh. I like squeezing the fruit for all of the juice it has. And comedy's beautiful like that. Like, we're talking about consistency. I'm j- <sighs> but that was it. Like, hey, how do I get more steady? How do I get more performances like this? I want to do more shows like this. I want to be more stages like this. That was my thought with the block party and coming on with my you was like, well, shit. I can get up once a month, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Like I did, I did 25 the first other block party. So, well, shit. I, could, I can go one big month. There was a point, what, like May through July, May through August, I'd say, where, and there was only two, May through August, there was one block party. That is right. There was one block party May through August. It was like, oh, I'm not even getting up quality stage time, but I was booked probably 
three, four times in May, two times in June. When you booked it all in July. And that's so crazy because I was going about to go back home to do that 30 minute set in Indiana. Hadn't hadn't been getting up in no big show. But shout out to Stephen and Niles letting me up at the Sunday Punchline. Y'all need to get me up Sunday Punchline. You said I was headlining. It's September. And I went up, did 10 minutes. Ugh, that was a good one. 20, 30 people in here. Okay. Okay. I might, I might, I might be back. And it, it was just sets like that. You going to, I'm going to next up. That's why niggas be like, you, you going to next up and you hosting the mic. I've heard the criticism. I'm like, oh, you, you interrupting the comic sign. Bitch, I'm a comic. You niggas hosting y'all mics and just passing it on and, or not giving them niggas good pass ons. I don't think that's, Conducive for your career. What you hold to the mic for? I want the energy in the room to be good. I want to work on my craft. I want them niggas to feel good when they come up here. I want them to know I was listening to their chat. That's why I had a riff off or something. So it's just like everybody, I don't know. Everybody gonna have their own way. Everybody gonna wanna do it their own do their own thing uh in this comedy shit. But like I tell you, it's math, you a mind magician, you a psychologist, you a teacher. <laughs> You a historian, dog. Like, this shit is so warped, man. That's why it's like, uh, what, uh, what can the internet nigga say about comedy like we? Man, this shit hard, bro. <laughs> yeah. This shit hard, bro. And uh, anybody that does it, it's always like a respect level. Unless you, you don't respect us, and that's when we like, fuck with you. And, uh, but other than that, it's just like, man, we working, bro. Like we supposed to, we, uh, how long have we been going? Because we only got a couple more segments because we can't call Sierra. Let's do these segments. Okay. Let's get the segments in. All right. So, sorry about this. Um, we do this thing here for the new people called Obsession of the Week. <laughs> it's been months, but I kind of picked David's Obsession. He can take the Obsession if you don't like what I picked. But uh, you want me to start with my Obsession or you want to go into your Obsession? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you finished the uh, rap shit? On HBO Max? Uh, is it all out? Is it all out now. I've finished it. Nice. Um, just finished it. Rap shit is amazing. Shout out to Issa Rae again, dog. I don't know. Black excellence. Susie, I'm rooting for everybody that's black. She has done it. Like, you saw the first couple episodes with me. I think the formatting of shooting with some of those IG Live POV, some of the framing of how we use in social media to see how modern day music artists makes it in the game. I think that's beautiful. And then it's just such a different tone. Like, I don't want to say tone because it's still black as fuck. But it, it, it's just such a different feel from Insecure. Like, it's this beautiful love show over here that's funny as hell. And then you got this motherfucking gangsta head, ratchet head, rap show about these bitches from Miami and shit. And it's just like, oh my God. Like, I think, like I said, my only criticism still, and something I, I, I don't want to spoil for yourself or nobody else, but one of my criticisms still is that the JT character, just too put together. It's too uptight. And not to say that JT herself isn't put together. I'm just like, damn, two, you couldn't have two hood bitches and show that they smart and take care of their shit and made it in the rap game? Because that's what we saw in real life. But I get a story makes it easier. It's, it's just contrast. You know what I mean? It's just easy to follow. But the show's amazing. I'm following the Mia Night Girl chameleon. Uh, she's a rapper uh, because. I'm pretty sure she's smart. She was already rapping, hustling her way up, man. But that motherfucker, man, Chameleon, listen, how many views we need for you to come on the pod? I was about to say come somewhere else with me, but the pod's fine, too. That's where we'll start. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, that's, that's it. I, I haven't really watched. I haven't been watching much. Man. I've been on the move a lot, but rap shit is my obsession right now. I just finished it. Uh, I haven't watched any of House of Dragons. And also, okay, can you say this before you do the I was, I was writing a joke. I did it at the Killer Mike the other day. And uh, <laughs> it was like, uh, y'all, I don't know how to tell y'all. I saw the Elvis movie. It was good, y'all. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hurt me. Hey, it was good. It was good. I'm so sorry. I was like, man, you did that. I don't know. That nigga was cold. <laughs> I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> but now I think. It's on streaming now, isn't it? It's, it's on, on HBO. HBO. But that's why I said it. I saw it on HBO Home Screen. I was like, oh, shit, Elvis. And. I literally just wanted to joke about seeing it. I thought that'd be funny to see a black dude saw it. And now I feel like it's my, it's how I'm going to tell white people I raised. 
Uh, I recently told some friends after that show, I just saw the Elvis movie. And one of the white boys went into a full, you know what I mean? Good artists couldn't be racist. You know what I mean? Like, B.B. King's his friend. And I went, what? What are you saying right now? <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, as he's talking to Jay, couldn't be racist. And Jay Gang said, just like, yeah. okay, all right, just say he racist. You're talking too much to go in the round. What are you saying? He's racist. He married a child. They're like, nah, that's what I'm saying. Another black friend of ours jumps in and goes, look, I thought he was racist too. Then I saw the movie. What? <laughs> the movie? He saw a two-hour flick. Tom Hanks in it was like, he couldn't have did it. That nigga innocent. He didn't do it. <laughs> he beat those charges. You niggas are sick. Fuck Elvis. The songs were great. Fuck Elvis. <laughs> He's racist. You don't have to die on that hill because the movie was great, dog. Like, what the hell, Austin McBroom? Have we ever seen this nigga again? I've never heard of Austin McBroom before this. So you saw that Twitter joke where it's like, this is how I know y'all making up white people. Who the fuck is foreign people? Like, what the fuck? Like, y'all are just making shit up, dog. I, I don't know, but obsessed with Ratchet. Shout out to Easter Ray. Shout out to Chameleon. Shout out to Ada Uthman. Shout out to my boy. Oh, man, I see him at uh, Black Market Fleet all the time. Was that Black on the Block? Uh, but it's the cat from, um, damn. Hey, man, great show. We had put, him, put him next to me when I figured out after. Uh, <laughs> uh, what is his name? But, uh, David, what's your obsession and why is it Marvel? <laughs> Recently, no, I'm, you know I'm more into the, the animated shows than you are. And there's this, like, free show that the... Uh, that this uh, creator named Vizzy Pop made a hell of a boss and uh, has been hotel. It's like these two free shows that you can just watch on YouTube. Real nice adult animation. Funny about hell. It's <laughs> really great. I can put up a, uh, yeah, let, me, let us see the trailer. I love adult animation though. <clears throat> I, I probably, sh- I probably could watch more adult animation, but I don't just like animation. Let's see if there's a trailer. I don't think there's a trailer. For it. It's all for free. Oh, there is. Yes, I. Guys, do you feel that? All right! Don't panic, Moxie! Elevator 666, departing for lust. Oh, Blitzy! Shut the fuck up! Damn it, Moxie, this is all your fault! How is this my fault? Y'all ready to get fucked up and make some bitchin' bad choices? Okay, look, you are all making this into a way bigger deal than it needs to be. I don't pry into your stupid personal lives. Does anybody love you? Blisso. Three episodes, eight of them, uh, first season. Pilot episode will have you locked in. Okay, and it's on the tube? On the tube for free. Okay, shut up. I'm fine with that. That's a cartoon show. Yeah, that She-Hulk thing. I don't. I don't know. I don't really. Not really sure what Marvel's doing re- lately, aren't they? Yeah, because they dropped nothing but duds recently. Like, hasn't been a good movie. I wouldn't say nothing but duds, but the, the, it's we, been pretty disappointing lately. Last month, that was sleeping in the theaters. Um, <laughs> That's just you uh, wanting to sleep in a comfortable seat. You know, uh, th- those regal seats are platinum. Yeah, uh, first off, very comfortable seats. Very comfortable. Second off, twenty dollar nap. Way more comfortable. <laughs> I paid for the seat now. I'm laying in. I'm gonna get a good nap in. Uh-huh. And, uh, I did. Fuck out of here, Chris. Hemsworth. What was the last Marvel that you enjoyed? Uh, WandaVision. The first? The, the first one, not the, the movie that wasn't marketed for that. Uh, <laughs> no. And I did like WandaVision too, obviously. I thought what? it was cool. It was better than Spider Man. I'm dying on that hill. Like, we did it in the uh, shout out, y'all be getting lost episodes, but I don't know whichever one comes. I know we talked about it in the last episode. Yeah. Not liking Spider Man, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, yeah. And we rewatched it together a couple mm-hmm. months ago, and I was still like, this ain't it, y'all. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Hey, this ain't the one, y'all. I don't know. I'm sick of a Spider the No Way Home, uh, as opposed to. We just talked about Issa Rae and some of her POVs. Like, uh, the first Spider Man Homecoming starts with him fucking swinging on Instagram. You know what I mean? And. That is innovative. It's very interesting as opposed to you bringing back two novelty characters and kind of relying on legacy and callbacks. Like, we were just shitting on. Can I say his name? I shouldn't even say it. 
we were shitting on this black reboot recently. It was just like, this just feels regurgitated. It was just a lot of callbacks. And I, I guess in that film's case, it was lazy. Uh, there was more effort. I don't even know. Was there more effort into Spider-Man? Like, I, I, I just, I didn't, I, uh, I don't, I, it sucked. I feel like you, Spider-Man caught you in a bad time. Caught you on a bad day, you know. What, what about Captain Marvel? What about that trash-ass Captain America? The, the, the Miss Marvel? The Miss Marvel show or the... Oh, the, no, I'm, the I'm talking Captain. Oh, Miss Marvel sucked too. But the Captain Marvel... You didn't watch that. No, I, I watched none of it. Exactly. <laughs> I just woke up to hate. One of my friends said, I've become hate. You know how like Batman is vengeance? <laughs> Like, I've become <laughs> hate, dog. Um, we got to get up out of here, man. We got a comedy show to get through. Uh, we got things to do tonight. Uh, and we are keeping people here on a Saturday. Um, I mean, David, I might as well give it to him. Can I get a Zoom? I mean, they did come to hear me talk about uh, justice for Corey. So, I'm a good guy, so. Last few weeks have kind of been tumultuous for me and rough on my loved ones. Um, yeah, it's been we've gotten some nasty messages, and it's I I want to just extend my voice and my platform to y'all to apologize. To absolutely fucking no one! This is the welcome man, bitch! <laughs> See y'all next week. <laughs>